This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys and welcome back. Well, before we jump into today's tutorial, uh, I just wanted to start off by saying uh, sorry for not posting for almost a week. Uh, unfortunately, I had a death in the family and uh, you know, that's just something that uh, happens. That's a circle of life, I guess. So that's why uh, I wasn't posting anything, but uh, I'm back with uh, new videos. So let's jump into today's video. So today we're going to talk about uh, FX. We're going to talk about how to use air in Maya and how to apply that together with the uh, end cloth. And I'm going to demonstrate that by means of creating a, a pirate ship sail. Okay. So uh, let's uh, jump in and check it out. Here we go. Okay guys, as mentioned in the introduction, uh, we're going to look at some uh, fields and we're going to apply them by means of creating a sail for a pirate ship. Okay, now this is going to be uh, extremely basic from a modeling point of view uh, because it's about the end cloth uh, techniques and the fields that we're going to use, uh, but you get the general idea. Okay. So this is a simplified mast for a pirate ship. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a sail that we can add into the space here. Okay. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to drag select this and go into my modeling menu and go to mesh and uh, combine. So that's one piece. It should be one piece mesh and combine. Let's try that again. Yep. There we go. And I'm going to start by creating my sail. So what I'm going to do is take a polygon plane. Hit R, scale that out, hit Control A for my attribute editor, and I'm going to set the plane to one by one for the simple reason that I'm going to have to deform this guy. I'm going to hit E to rotate, hold down J to snap that upwards, W and push that forward. Okay, now let's see where I'm at. Okay, I'm going to go to this view. I'm going to hit R to scale that down to about there. So it's sitting on that vertical part there. Push it in until that is inside the dimension as well. And then I'm going to right click and go to vertex and I'm going to drag select these bottom vertices. Hit W to push them up until they're inside our frame here. And then hit R to scale them out. Okay, like I said, pretty basic. All right, so we're gonna right click at object mode, hit W, we're gonna push that back until it's sitting where it should be sitting. Hit four for wireframe mode, it should be just outside there like so. All right, and now what we need to do, which is very important, is we need to add some edge loops because if there are no edge loops, this object cannot bend and it has to be able to deform in order for it to, uh, to respond as an end cloth object. Okay. So I'm going to go to, uh, let's see, mesh tools, insert edge loop, option box, multiple, and we'll do three. And we'll do three and not that, not there. Hang on. Three here. And come on. I'm just going to hide this guy here for a sec. That works a little bit better. Okay. So three here, I'll do three here, three here, three here, and three here, and I will do the same here, 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 and here. Okay. I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard to get out of that. I'm going to go down to display and show all. And there you have it. Okay. So this is now able to deform. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind here is this front part is gray, which displays a Lambert. This is black. It's a one sided plane. And if your shot is going to be something like this, that's fine. But if you're going to have a sail boat that's going to come along and move away and go over there, you have the black side. You don't want that. Okay. If that's the case, what you need to do now before you create the end cloth is give it some thickness. So you would right click, go to object mode, hit control E to extrude that and give it a thickness of 0 0.01. And by doing so, you will have a front and a back. You can already see that black going on there. 
The simple reason for that is that it is too thin and the black from the back is showing through the front. Okay, so I'm going to hit Control Z to go back and let's do 0 0.05, for example. Okay, so now that problem is gone. Now, the reason why I'm demonstrating that is as soon as we turn this into an end cloth object and we add the wind to the scene, the inside of the sill could uh, protrude through the outside and you would see black spots. Now, I don't think so, but we'll have to keep that in mind. OK. All right. So now it's time to turn this thing into cloth. OK, we're going to right click at object mode. We're going to select it and we're going to go up to our FX menu and we're going to go to end cloth and create end cloth. Now, we're wondering, of course, whether that works because there's nothing going on there, right? You see that little purple thingy down there. So what we're going to do is we're going to check. We're going to go to Windows and check our outliner. And there we see that we have a nucleus and we have an end cloth object. OK, so that means that that has worked. Now, without doing anything else, I'm just going to go into my animation slider here. I got 400 frames set up. I'm just going to hit play and see what happens. Okay, not too much. Okay, new frame there. There we go. It's falling straight down. Well, two reasons why that is happening. One is the end cloth has a gravity added to it, uh, which is exactly 9.8, so pretty much real world. And that's what makes it fall down. The second reason is our sill is not attached to anything, right? So I'm going to jump back to my frame one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my sail to the top and bottom part of the mast here. OK. All right. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to right click, go to vertex, drag select these top vertices, and I'm going to add a constraint. Now I'm going to go to uh, end constraint. And in this situation, I'm going to select transform constraint. Uh, if you want your ship to actually move and your sail to follow along with your mast, you would use a, a point to surface constraint. I'm going to use a transform constraint because I'm going to go for a still image. And I'll explain to you what I mean. So if I want this to be my final render shot with a bulge sail, that's fine. But as soon as I start to animate this boat and move it, the sail will stay here and the mast will move. So if you want it to move alongside with your mast, what you would do is select your object. So this, you would select the mast here with these vertices and you would go to a point to surface. OK, so we did this. We kind of fixed the top in place. Let's see if there's any difference to what happened just yet. We're going to hit play. And as you can see, it's starting to respond somewhat but it's certainly not falling down. OK, so what we're going to do next is we're going to jump back to frame one and the bottom part of the sill here. Let's tweak that. I'm going to right click, go to come on, right click vertex and I'm going to take this vertex down here, one here and maybe one in the middle, but that's it. OK, and again, I'm going to go up to uh, constraint and transform constraint. Let's hit play again, and you will still not see that much difference, just a little bit. If we look down here, and I'll just go to frame one, you see that's bouncing a little bit. OK, I'm going to go back to frame one. I'm going to select my cloth, and in my attribute editor, I'm going to see if I can replace this with a different type of cloth. All right, so I'm going to hit Control A to pull up my attribute editor. And let's look for our end cloth. I can actually do that here as well. Windows Outliner, uh, let's see, right here. And what I want to do is go into the presets and choose a material. Now I got airbags, beach balls, burlap, and so forth. I want something that uh, responds nicely, like a sill would. So I'm going to select Silk and hit Replace. That doesn't necessarily mean that we'll have a huge difference, but we'll give it a try. OK, and it's starting to get a little bit more bouncy, if you will. OK, now let's make this look like an actual sill. For that, we need a field and that field is called air. And that almost makes sense, right? 
Now, if we look down here, you can see that we have our directional arrows. We got the Y pointing up, the uh, Z pointing that way in the X, okay? So I want wind coming from the X direction to blow, blow into my sail. So I'm gonna select the object itself, which maybe sounds a bit weird, but that's how this works, because I'm gonna apply wind to this object. So I selected my sill and I'm gonna go up to fields and solvers. I'm gonna to go to air, open up the option here. Magnitude right now is at five. So how strong is the wind? I'll just click on wind here. Is at five and then you have the direction. You got the X, Y, and Z. Right now it's at direction X. So I'm gonna hit create. We'll hit play and we'll probably see a fairly minimal effect. You can see that it's starting to move a little bit Actually in the wrong direction, it should push it that way. So we need minus X, but that's fine. We'll go back to the start, hit control A. Uh, let's see our, uh, where is it? Is this our direction here? Yeah, it's one. So we want negative one on X and let's increase that magnitude. Let's go with 50, okay? We're gonna move that over here and let's hit play again and let's see what we get. Okay, this is starting to look a little bit like a sill, right? Okay, let's go back to frame one and let's do, I don't know, 250. Let's see what we get. Okay, now that's pretty cool. Now, a couple of things you can do here, you can just freeze this frame. And if you want this to be in a still model, what you would do is you would select everything in object mode, come on. You would select everything and you would go up to edit, delete by type and history. And then all your end cloth uh, details are gone and it's a new static object and you can export it as such, okay?